Scott today, I uh, come to me uh, when we first started coming back to church. And I know it's from God because I've had a lot of confirmation on it. Not a lot, but pretty much confirmation on it. Uh, it was in Kenny's Bible study. It was just me and Kenny. We were going through it, and uh, this, uh, this topic came up. So I thought, boy, that'd be a good topic to preach on. So left it at that, shared a little bit of it with uh, our Tuesday night uh, prayer meeting folks. And then uh, yesterday the topic came up again in, the, uh, in our men's group. And, uh, and I had already planned on preaching on it and was had already uh, was going to, after that, start putting this message together. And I was sitting in the back, and that first song they sang, The, the Bride of Christ. Well, the topic of my message is, Here Comes the Bride. So I kind of knew that it was uh, that God's hands in it. The only thing I, I con concerns me is is the delivery of it, and that's you know with the Spirit, huh? It's not my problem. It isn't Becky, but you know in my humanistic side of me, I feel like oh, I'm gonna let God down here because this is His message, not mine. Yeah, we will pray now in a minute, uh, but let's do. Let's pray now. So. Good and gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for the opportunity to be up here. I thank you for the opportunity, Lord God, to uh, have another breath, Father. Uh, I praise you, Lord God, for the, the long life I've lived. And uh, I thank you, Lord God, that you just uh, enable us, Lord God, to just go on through and uh, that you're with us, that you never leave us nor forsake us, Lord, that's your promise. And Lord God, I testify to that promise. So Lord God, as we look at the word this morning, we just I just pray, Lord God, that you just uh, speak not only to me, Lord God, but to everybody's heart, Lord God, as we as we prepare, Lord God, because I do believe we're in the last days and uh, been there for quite a while, Lord. So we're just waiting patiently for you to come back. So, Lord God, I just thank you again. I praise you, and I ask all of our prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. So this message is going to, if, if you look at the bride, it's coming out of Ephesians chapter 5, and it's going to start in the, in the 21st verse, and, and it's, it's all about relationships. But before I start, we, we're, we're going to talk about the, the, the first bit of it business was Paul was talking to the wives, and how their reaction was, and then to the husbands and what theirs. But the, the third one, which I'm not going to get into, but I thought it was very important because it is Family Sunday, he talks to the children, and he leaves them with a command. And it, and it come out of Deuteronomy 5.16, kids. Listen up, Jari, listen up, because this, is a, this, this word that I'm going to preach to you guys here, this promise that God makes, it's true because I, it I, I can testify to it in my life. Uh, and it says, in that verse, it, it says, honor your mother and father. Honor your mother and father. You're a young person in here. Listen to this because it's good. Because this here, you can, you can bank on it. If you honor, your, you honor your mother and father like the Lord God has commanded you, honor your mother and father so that you may live long and that may go well with you. And he talks about in the Israelites when they were going in the land of the Israelites. It comes out of Deuteronomy 5. Scene. But it, to live a long life. You know what? That's something that I practiced, Mary's practiced, and we've lived a long life. I've lived a long life. I'm only going to be 62, but that's a pretty long life compared to somebody like, it's only 15 or so. I haven't lived a long life. And I, I can testify to that scripture that it's true. And I praise God for that because that's one thing. And as young people is honor your mother and father. And, and that's, I always struggled with that doing children's ministry because there was a lot of, lot of mothers and fathers that didn't do a very good job of taking care of their kids. But that doesn't make a difference. You're still to honor your mother and father. So keep that near and dear to your heart. Take care of that and honor your mother and father. So let's get back to the, uh, that was just a little side note. I want to get the kids in there. And, uh, and I, you see that played out, you know, and I've seen that played out in a lot of young people's lives. I, Carly sitting on the front row, I've, I've watched her honor her mother and father. And you know what? Now look at her. She's going on to a different life, but it's going to be a long, good life. So praise God for that, you know. So, and then and Carly too. We're gonna, if we're going to talk about brides, well, let's look at the scripture. First of all, we'll read the scripture, and it's in verse 17, or 21, Ephesians 5, verse 21. <coughs> uh, 
it starts in 21, and we're going we're gonna to settle in on this verse for a little bit. Uh, but I'll read it all and, and, and so we can go through it. It says, Submit to one another out of the reverence for Christ. And he goes on and, and challenges and tells the wives, it says, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, and Christ is the head of the church. His body, his body of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to your husbands in everything. It goes on to say, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Make her holy, cleansing her by washing her with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain, wrinkle, or blemish, but holy and blameless. I'm going to stop right there and stay right there because I, it's not going to be a message of what the wife is supposed to do, what the husband's supposed to do, nor what the children. That's all in the scripture, but I want to talk about the bride of Christ. And everyone here, a born again believer, if you're a born again believer here, you are the bride of Christ. And what are we waiting for? Just what that first song? For his return. So. When we look and think about the bride of Christ, and, and, and I like that, and I like the way Paul went through this and, and come into this, because that's something we can relate to. We can see that visually. You know, the last wedding I was at was my daughter's wedding. And I was, had the, and, and here, it was great, because I was able to walk her down the aisle, you know, but, and I love that. But the one wedding I was at, I was able to stand and watch another beautiful lady, young lady, I wish I had a picture of her when we first got married 40 years ago, <laughs> walking down the aisle in that white. You know, and what that, it, have you ever, I mean, it, there is never, ever, ever, I don't care, I've never, ever been to a wedding to where the, the, the brides are just so beautiful. And it's just incredible the feeling you get, I, I think about the last wedding here was Carly's wedding when she walked down that aisle. You know, you get goosebumps, man, and, and they sing that song, the wedding song, and, it, and it's just like, wow. And what that, that picture we get there of that precious person in that white dress, which, what does that white represent? Anybody? What is it? Purity. It's it's beautiful. What else? Yeah, yeah. That's what that you know. And and you look at that, and it's just like wow. And it's just like, but that's I picture that, and then I think about that's what Paul's gonna look like. Hopefully, when Jesus comes back. <laughs> now, <laughs> I mean, that's hard for me to wrap my head around that. But yeah, you laugh about that. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. But you think about that. That's the garment that, I, that, that, that I'm going to wear. And where does it talk about that? We used to do that in CR. What is that, that scripture? I got it here somewhere, but it's probably back down in my notes here a little bit. But it, it, it talks about that when we were going to be as white as snow, that crimson red to the wool. Uh, see here again, Mark. I get, get ahead of myself. <laughs> and it says, and then that comes from Isaiah 118. And it says, come now, let us... Settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall, shall they be as white as snow. Though they are as red as crimson, they shall be like wool. And it's, it's and, and, you know, you think of a, the bride. Another beautiful thing is a, a fresh snow on the ground. Man, when there was, it just covers everything up. There's nothing prettier than a beautiful fresh snow. There again, that whiteness of that snow. The beauty of that snow and the, it's just clean, you know. And I remember as a kid, man, when it snowed, we had a blast. You know, we look forward to that, you know. We used to eat the snow, maybe we shouldn't have, but <laughs> we did. We, you know, and it was just the, the purity in that and it's incredible. And, uh, and, I, and I look at this bride that we're going to be when Jesus comes back, you know. And, and what we are right now, we are the bride of Christ. And in troubled times, we are the bride of Christ. We are, we should be, you know, we, we, we talked about this in our meeting yesterday. We were talking about the, the you know, the Jesus and, and how, how cool, I think it was Leroy was talking about our, how cool it would be to just been walking around with Jesus. 
Well, we should be realizing that now because Christ, the Spirit of the living God is in us. We are Christ to a lot of people. We are Christ to everyone, or we should be. We are his representative, you know? And, and we should have that, that garment on all the time. But it's, it's difficult for us at times. But, but that's what we should be. <clears throat> and, if, and if you look at this relationship that Paul's talking about, in, in the chapter previous to this, Paul gives a long list of what we shouldn't be what we needed to put off. And I mean, it's a long laundry list of things that, that need to go. And then he transitions into this relational deal here that all that stuff should be gone. And when that stuff's gone, it makes this new relationship you have with your, your wife and your children, and your husbands, it, 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 it turns a big different, gives a, di a whole different aspect of what we're, what we're to be and what we're to do. <clears throat> and, he, and the first bit of business that you get to get in is, is in verse 21. Paul talks about, and it's, it's all about that one word that we have a hard time with. It's submission. It says, submit to one another out of the reverence for Christ. Not because, I mean, it's a good thing to do, but he says, submit to one another out of the reverence of Christ. Submit. That's a tough word for us. That's usually a stumbling block. Matter of fact, it's a, it's a, ton, it's a big stumbling block to anybody, a first-time believer, because that's what, that's what God calls us to do is submit. You know, it was difficult in this COVID deal. It was difficult me, for me to, well, it wasn't difficult because I, I swear it was scripture, but it was, it's hard for my freedoms to be, I felt like we're being pressed upon but God's word says I just needed to submit to the governing authorities. Well, there were some, the rules came back, that came down that I submitted to and followed through. Didn't agree with it all the time, but I submitted to it. And you know what, I think it's, it's gonna turn out okay. It's pretty chaotic right now, but God is in control and it's gonna turn out really well. But he talks about this and Paul says, and, and Paul declares here that every spirit-filled Christian, every spirit-filled Christian is to be, first of all, is to be humble and submissive. Humble and submissive. It says this is the foundation for all relationships. And I believe that. That is absolutely the foundation of every relationship on the face of the earth, is submission, humble and submission you know, to one another. And as a Christian, when you put that on, you know what, you are going to have some really, really good relationships. I'll guarantee it. That's, that's a promise from God, and you will have some great relationships. Because that, when I'm, when I'm submissive, there's a lot less arguing going on, you know. In the last couple, well, in the last, since this whole thing, Mary and I have been down at uh, this little place we have in Patterson, and, and uh, I always like going down there. But the place was a dump, you know, and I would sneak down there on a Friday night. It was quiet. And uh, I told Mary, I says, boy, I'd like for you to come down there with me. She goes, I will not come down there and spend any time with you unless you fix it up. And I says, okay. And we worked together and we've been going down there every weekend and we spend four or five days at a time working together and not one, I don't, there's not one time that we've argued. Have we, Mary? We haven't, you know. I listened to her pretty much most of what she wanted to do. I can't tell everybody she watches way too much HGTV because she's, she's got all these decorating ideas and all I got is a little four, it's a five room cabin that it, it's really nice now. Matter of fact, it's to the point now where I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, anyway, but I wouldn't be embarrassed to bring anybody down there to see, to see it. And it's, it's incredible. What, what has happened down there with, uh, with a lot of elbow grease, a little bit of money, a bunch of paint, but more than that, a bunch of love. You know, because what's happened down there in the last two months, my wife and I's relationship has been, it's been getting closer and closer, and, and I treasure and value that. And I, I, I equate that and what I've been struggling with, and it's not struggle with, but I, what, I, what I want is, I want that relationship to be just as strong with the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and to do that, I was telling Pastor Joe to do that, and we talked about this yesterday in, in this topic of prayer. 
and this is again, I'm on a side note now, I chased a rabbit, but prayer, that's what connects us to the Father. Every morning of my life I get up and read, but what I need to really be doing, I told Joe this morning, I think for that first half hour to 45 minutes, just pray, and then do my reading, you know, pray, because it's so important, folks, prayer. It, it'll get us through everything. And what it'll do is it'll connect us to the Father. Like, and we'll be so connected, it'll be just, what an inc incredible relationship that, that, that comes out of that. So it's just as you spend time with your loved ones, the more time you spend with them, the better your relationships are. The more time we spend with our Father in heaven and His Son, Jesus Christ, is the better our relationship is with Him. And it says that, and it, it found that, and in the foundation of all relations, in this section, wives, husband, and children, it says, no believer is inherently superior to any other believer in our standing before God. And you get that out of Galatians 3.28. It says, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female. You are all one in Christ Jesus. We are all one in Christ Jesus. You know what? None of us here, just because I'm on the pulpit up here this morning, I am no better than anybody here. Not any other believer here. And you know what? Because there's times and I, that I have to be held accountable and need a good brother or sister. And we talked about that this morning to step in and, and to say something because that's what true love is. You know what? If I left the house this morning and didn't have decent attire on, my wife would let me know. And I thank her for that, you know, because, you know what, I don't want to embarrass her. I don't want to embarrass anybody else. But that's true love when somebody tells you what's wrong with you. It's easy to pat somebody on the back and send them on their way, but it's, it's tough when you have, to, you have to talk to somebody and you do it in love. And remember, be humble and submissive when we do it. Because if you're not, that person's not going to hear it. Not, they're not going to hear it. We have to be humble and submissive. <clears throat> and Proverbs 9.10 goes on to say, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One who is understanding. That's what Proverbs says. Key to it here is, is Paul's talking about here is this submission and this humbleness is we need we have to we mandatorily have to fear the Lord. If you don't fear the Lord, it ain't gonna work. We need to fear the Lord. And that's how Paul paints this picture of this 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 wife and this husband and these children, this relationship. You know, and, 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 the, and the bride. And, and that's the picture of what Paul is trying to say here. And what he's doing here is, and if you look at this scripture, if you, if you read down in here, it says, it says, for the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is Savior. If you have a Christ-loving husband following Humble, being humble and submissive. I don't care what anybody says. There's no wife on the face of the earth that wouldn't want to follow a man like that. If we have a wife that is humble and submissive, there's no husband on the face of the earth that wouldn't do absolutely anything for her. I don't care who you are. That's the attitude. Because where do we get that attitude from? Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. That's the attitude that we carry through life is, that, is what Jesus Christ has done for us. And knowing and, and, and just being so grateful and thankful for that, you know. And, and to think about that is to, is just a, man, it's just, I love the way Paul painted that picture with that relationship deal. You know, a lot of times you hear those messages and it's, it's getting down on somebody, but Paul's saying, this is how this works. This is how this relationship works. In any relationship, any relationship in our lives. Not only that is, is that being humble and submissive. <clears throat> How do we do that? How do we achieve that in our lives? It needs more of this. We need one another. We need fellowship. We need Bible study. 
we, we, we need it all. You know what? It's easy, and, and you know what? And I, I saw that happen here is, is, you know, when we quit coming to church, you know what? It was great because it, it was kind of a, a sabbatical for me, but I can see where you quit coming to church, and I've seen it in, in life, and I've played that out with people that I've tried to help. They get on fire, and they'll, well, I'm going to come to church. They start coming to church, and then, then what happens? They get wrapped up in life, get moving in life. They don't come to church. They don't come to a Bible study, and then we start falling back. But the key is this, this wonderful church that, that Christ set up. It's not my church, Joe's church, Mark's church, anybody's church. This is God's church. This is Christ Jesus' church. You are here today because Christ Jesus planted you here today. And I got news for you. He expects us to be here today, you know. And, and I'm not saying I'm not dogmatic on you have to be here every day. But you know what? It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? I love being in the house of the Lord. It's just incredible, you know. I love the way this book talks about <clears throat> I love the way this book talks about all of the, 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 the bride relationships. It's, it's talking about that all the time. And I'm gonna, I look at this, I look at the scripture with, uh, you know, I'm going I'm to read one about, about a wedding feast and the bride. Let's look at it. Go to Matthew 22. I should have that marked in here. Matthew 22. This is a, a cool parable about a wedding banquet. And uh, I, it's kind of difficult, but it's, it's easy in a sense. You know, in Matthew 22, in Jesus, he's speaking again in parables, and he's, he's referencing now in Jesus' time, he's looking at this Jewish, this Jewish nation he was part of how they've they formed this religion with the, the Pharisees and he's he's correlating and he's and talking these parables and he's and he says the kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet banquet for his son. Hmm. He said he sent his servants to those who had been invited, these are the invited guests, sent them out. These people, these were totally, they already had invitations sent out, and he sent his servants out to these invited guests back to, to, to tell them to come. But what did they do? They refused to come. The invited guests refused to come. So this guy goes, man, I got this big feast. You know, that would be disheartening if, if we prepared for a big wedding reception and the invited guests didn't show up. It says... Then he sent some more servants and he said, tell those who have been invited that I've prepared my dinner. He's begging with him. He says, my oxen and fatted cattle have been butchered and every, everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But he says they paid no attention and went off to his field, another to his business. He says, the rest, seized, the rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged, and he sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he went to his backup plan. He, sent, he, he says, then he said to his servants, the wedding banquet is ready, but those who I invited did not, did not deserve to come. So go into the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. That's us. We all got invited on the back end of this wedding. He went into all the street corners. He went and he found Paul 20 some odd years ago and invited him to the banquet. Man, it was awesome. Ah. So the servants went out in the streets and gathered all the people they could find and the bad as well as the good. Get that, the bad as well as the good. The bad as well as the good are invited into the kingdom. That goes for everybody. Everybody's invited. Everyone is invited. I don't care who you are on the face of the earth, you are invited to the banquet. Everyone is invited. That's what the scripture says. Everyone is invited. Jesus said, no man is without excuse because of my creation. There's no excuse. And he says, uh, 
So the servants went out and gathered all and they could find as well as a good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, picture that, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. You know, these people, they didn't know they were even going to the wedding. So this man invited him out. He invited all these people. So if this guy didn't have, if this guy, the wedding clothes, I, I assume and believe that the, that the king was providing clothes for these people at the wedding. Much like what Jesus Christ does for us. He provides the clothing to, for us to wear. And he's, he's provided the clothes. But here this king comes in and he finds this guy without wedding clothes. <clears throat> and he says to him, he goes, then he noticed there was a man there not wearing wedding clothes. He asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. When he comes back, and we don't have the wedding clothes on, you will stand there speechless. Guarantee it. We will be speechless. That's how important it is to be ready and have the wedding clothes on. <clears throat> because who provided them? God, he provided the wedding clothes for every, everybody here. Now, most of all of you here have, have put on the wedding clothes. And you, you're somewhat ready. We, we always got to be ready. But we have the, or at least we, we have the wedding clothes on. And it says, he says, then the king told the attendants, Tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. And this is the scripture, man. And I just like, I, I have and I, I can't, I'm not going to begin to try to explain it because it says, for many are invited, but only few are chosen. You know, I believe everybody has an opportunity to say yes to Jesus Christ. I don't, I don't care what anybody says. He, we have that opportunity. Now we might, and it's up to us to do with it what we want, you know, because that's how good our God is because he gives us that, and maybe it's a curse really because I, we have the opportunity to reject him also, you know. I know I rejected him a lot of years. I didn't quite know I was doing it, but in it, once I found out, once my eyes were opened, I realized how I was rejecting him. And, and you know what? That's why it's so important, again, that we, we be in God's Word, we be around other believers, and we listen. We listen to hear God. And, we, and, and, and there's, I don't have to tell anybody, when, when we do something that we shouldn't be doing, God, you know it, because God lays it on your heart. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ and you're wrapped up in sin, you, you won't find peace with anything because God is going to reveal that to you. And it happens to us. You know, the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We're not, we don't practice sin, but it, it can happen at times. You know, we can get lazy, we can be off of our guard, and that's the time the devil shows up and puts a stupid thought in your head because that's where it starts. It, is, it starts with a thought in our minds. And that's why the Bible says we have to hold every thought captive. Because I'll tell you what, whenever, if, if ever, whenever I fall into sin, it's, it started with a thought that I could have easily have said, not today, devil. But sometimes we don't do that. We just, we get wrapped up and, and fall into that sin. <coughs> in Revelation 9, 7, I, I love that chapter in, in Revelation, I'm sorry, 19, 7. I'm going to go back over there. Because I only have one piece of scripture I wanted to read, but I want to read a little bit more of that. It's in chapter 19 of Revelation. The only thing I can tell you about Revelations is if you read it, the Bible says you will be blessed. And that's all. <laughs> and, it, and you will be. It's a difficult book, but you'll be blessed. And I'll tell you where the blessing comes. It comes in chapter 19 and 20 and 21. And, it's, and it starts in, uh, well, my verse starts, I'm going to start in verse 7. Let's start in verse 1. It says, uh, After I heard what sound like the, the roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. Amen. For true and just are his judgments. I love that. He has commanded the great prostitute which corrupted the earth by her adulteries. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. 
Then again they shouted, Hallelujah! The smoke of the goes up forever and ever. The 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who was seated on the throne and, and cried, Amen, Hallelujah! Then a voice came from heaven saying, Praise our God, all you servants, you who fear him, both great and small. Then I heard a sound like a great multitude, like a roar of a rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder and shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come and the bride has made herself ready. And the bride has made herself ready. What an awesome day that was, is what it's going to be, because that's to come. But before, when that comes, it's, well, I'm not going to go, because let's try to, it's not going to come in my lifetime. <laughs> but Jesus could come back in my lifetime, but it's another story. But anyhow, but that day is after that thousand years on the face of the earth, when there was trial and tribulation and the beast, the Antichrist had his, his way. Here comes Jesus with the new Jerusalem, the new heaven, the new earth. And that's something to look forward to. When you know what? We're not going to see what's going to. One day, all this garbage that you see going on in this world is going to cease. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. And who's going to reign? Jesus Christ and those dressed in white, the bride, we're going to reign with him. And, and rule it. Man, that's something to look forward to. He says here, For God Almighty reigns, let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and the bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given to her to wear. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given to her to wear. You know what? When you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you were given some fine linen. You were given fine linen. And our job, I, for me, I guess, our job is on this earth is to keep that linen clean <laughs> because it can get dirty at times, you know? So our job is spiritually to keep that linen clean. And that's what we're talking about, something spiritually here. And that's a job. That's what it takes. That's why it, I'm, I'm adamant about being part of something bigger than yourself. You know, that's why it's important to serve to, do, for, to do, do, do as unto others. Jesus commanded that. To love others. You know, love him and love others. That's a command. Those are part of the things we do to keep that, the, our, garment, our garment clean. <coughs> and it says, and in, in a footnote in this, it says, fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. So there is acts of acts of righteousness that we, we put on because we're God's holy people. And that's what we need to practice. That's what we need to do. You know, and I don't know where everybody's at. I got a lot of work to do. I do know one thing. I got the, I got the garment. I only got the garment of the fine lemon. I got the garment of praise on too. You know, and we need to, that's all part of worship and praise. You know, this preaching is just one part of this worship service. You know, it's just one small part of it is in what we worship, how we worship, what we do and say to one another, how we love one another. Those all reflect being humble and submissive because of the love that Jesus Christ had for us. Had for me, I'll make it personal, had for me that plucked me out of the darkness and put me into the light and give me a new life, a new lease on life where I'm able to deal with the heartbreak that's going on, you know, and it's out there. It's everywhere, and there's people dealing with it, you know. We're kind of sheltered a little bit here in, in beautiful little St. Genevieve, but there's a big world out there, and you don't have to go far to find it. You know, just go to St. Louis, go to Ferguson, and, and go to see, and you see what happened. There's no reason to happen what that man happened to him in, in uh, Minnesota. It shouldn't have happened. That was just pure evil is what that was. And I'll tell you what, that doesn't happen when you're humble and you're submissive, you know, and you love God. What we're going to do now is we're going to have our, we're going to worship him with, with our uh, the Lord's Supper. You know, and, and Paul gives us some instructions. So was, can I have the head usher and his men come up and hand out the Lord's Supper? I like giving you a title. <laughs> yeah. He's also a housekeeper too. Well, humble him a little bit, yes. <coughs> so uh, when we hand out the elements, 
You know, Paul in, in, in Corinthians, he says, we need to examine our hearts. You know, because you can, this, this Lord's Supper, it can condemn you too. And if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, don't take it. And don't be embarrassed about it. But don't take it. Because it says you bring condemnation on yourself. I don't want that for anybody. He said also examine your hearts because if we're going to do this, if you got some unconfessed sin on your heart, take a minute and just share it. Share it with God. You don't have to share it with me or anybody else. If you really want to get rid of it, do what they say in James chapter 5, I think it's verse 15. Share it with one another. Because that holds us accountable. There again, that's why the body of Christ is available. But that's hard sometimes, but just share it with God. Let it go. If you're feeling anger towards somebody, you're hiding something, let it, give it to God and let it go so you can enjoy what he's done for us. In his, in his, because we're going to, we're saying when we do this that, that we believe. And I know I believe. I praise God for that. So just take a minute to, as they pass out and just examine yourselves. Is Travis still in the house? Not that Travis, the other Travis. <laughs> Thank you, man. You know, back in, uh, in Paul's day, he had to he'd go to the Corinthian church and correct them about this. You know, they were, them, them folks got in all kind of trouble. You know, poor Paul, but uh, he was long-suffering and, and patient, and he loved this church. And he gives them the following directives, and he says, I have no praise for you for your meetings. Do more harm than good. In the first place, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you, and to some extent, I believe it. He says, no doubt there have been differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. Says, so then when you come together, it's, it's not the Lord's Supper you eat, for when you are eating, some of you go ahead with your own private suppers. As a result, one person remains hungry and another gets drunk. Do you have homes to eat in and drink? Or do you despise the church of God in, humil in humiliating those who do nothing? What should I say to you? Shall I praise you? Certainly not of this matter. For what I received from the Lord, what I also passed on to you, and that's what Paul did. He, when he received it from the Lord, he passed it on to his people. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. He broke it. He says, every time you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Take and eat. He says, in the same way after supper, he took the cup, saying, he goes, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Take and drink. Folks, we just need to remember who we are and who we need to be when he comes. The bride of Christ. Every one of us, we're the bride of Christ. You know what? I, Bradley, I'm going to help you continue to remind you who you are, where you are, and what you are. And you're going to do the same for me because that's why God give us one another. We need that once in a while. We need that encouragement. We need that love. We need to be, what do we need to be, first of all, early on? Starts with an H. Humble. 
Second word, hardest word do we ever do? Submissive. Humble and submissive. If you take anything away from this message as the bride of Christ, you need to be humble and submissive. Travis, can you come up here, son? Where's Joe at? There he is, Josias. Could you uh, play that first song you played, The Bride? Close us out in that. Would you mind doing that? Uh, we're having a, uh, he submits, uh, this is Travis, this is your last Sunday as a worship leader. We have a new worship leader here this morning. This is kind of the torch. You're going to pass the torch. Joe, Pastor Joe told me you want to make some changes up here on a Sunday morning, that you would like to do a, a worship song first and then do announcements. I was thinking about that. I like that idea. That's good. I think that'd be great. And you are going to be the new worship leader here. So we're going to, we're going to hand this, trust this and hand this all over to you. You know, and you're, you're going to lead us. I love that one song that you sang. We're not singing it today, but lead us into the Holy of Holies. And that's what worship should do. Lead us into the Holy of Holies. And that's a big commission. And I, and I applaud you for listening and, and being obedient to the call of Jesus Christ on your life. And I thank God for that. So you're going to run with it because we're going to trust that you're going to pray, be prayerful, and you're going to listen and hear from God when you, every song that you pick to do up here on a Sunday morning or any time you're out worshiping. Amen? Amen. Thank you, brother. Travis, you'll close in prayer. No, Josiah, you'll close this in prayer when we're done. <laughs> Let us stand together as we finish. is coming soon. Call back the sinner, wake up the saint, let every nation shout of your fame. Jesus is coming soon. Like a bride
Jesus, come, Lord Jesus. 